Are you tired of remembering the IP numbers for all of the servers in your internal network? Why don't you just set up a local DNS server so that you can just use the names instead of the IP numbers? In this video, I will walk through the process of installing DNS mask, which provides DNS, DHCP, router advertisement, and network booting capability to a small network. The features we're going to look at are the DNS server capability and the DHCP capability. If I have a new machine on my network that is named EvilBox, I can't just ping EvilBox without telling the system of its existence. I will get an error of unknown host. So if I do ping EvilBox, I would get this error. So the easiest thing to do for adding the capability of domain name resolution is to edit the slash etsy slash host file, which is available in the Linux and Mac OS. On Windows is also available under C colon backslash Windows backslash system32 backslash drivers backslash Etsy backslash hosts. So I'm going to go ahead and do sudo vi of slash Etsy slash host. I'm going to add the IP number of EvilBox in addition to the name EvilBox. Go ahead and quit and save this file. Now, uh, when I'm back on my command line, I can go ahead and ping evil box because my system is now looking at Etsy hosts for the domain name resolution. This is great, but if this machine reboots or if I want to be able to access evil box from another machine in my local network, then this method won't work, right? I would have to edit the Etsy host file on every single machine. So the other thing I can do is edit the etsy resolve.conf file on all of my clients to point to the name server of 192.168.1.207, right, my local DNS. But that's a lot of manual work, right? Plus, how about uh, those devices that you can't really edit like phones and tablets? We can solve that problem using the DNS mask program to serve as a DNS server and a DHCP server. Let's start creating a Linux container in my Proxmox virtual environment that I had set up in a separate video. I'm first going to click on the Create CT button up here to create a LXC for running DNS mask. All right, in the General tab, we can set the CT ID, which I'm going to make 207, and then a host name of DNS mask CT, because that's what the container is going to do. It's fairly descriptive. And then I'm going to add a password and make sure that the unprivileged container is checked and nesting is also checked. I'm going to hit next and then we see the template tab and I'm going to select the only storage pool I have. And then for the template, I'm going to use Ubuntu 22.04. I'm going to hit next and then we're going to see the disk tab. I'll be asked to select the storage pool and the data size, which I'm going to take the default of 8 gigs. And I'm going to hit next, and then we see the CPU tab. Once again, I'm going to take the default of one core for this container. And then I'm going to hit next and see the RAM tab. I'm going to leave the default of 512 megs of RAM and 512 megs of swap. I'm going to hit next, and then we see the network tab. Here, I'm going to leave the firewall checked as the default, and then I'm going to set a static IP of 192.168.1.207 for the IPv4, and then I'm going to add the slash 24 for the CIDR notation for this network. And for the gateway, I will enter 192.168.1.1. Then I'm going to hit the next button, and then we see the DNS tab. I'm going to type in the local domain name as bluemonkeyforensics.local. And then for DNS servers, I will use the Google one of 8.8.8.8. .8 I'm going to hit next, and we're going to see the confirmation page. Read over everything to make sure this is what uh, you want. And then down here, I'm going to leave this unchecked, the start after created. I'm going to need to do some things. So I'm going to leave that unchecked and then hit finish and let it create the container. Okay, when it's done with creating the container, we can boot the container and then log in with the credentials we just created. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is the perfunctory updates and upgrades to make sure that I have the latest and greatest uh, system software. So I'm going to do an apt update ampersand ampersand apt upgrade dash y to answer yes to everything. And when that is done, I'm going to install the DNS mask server software by doing apt install DNS mask. And it installs fairly fast, but it looks like uh, during the install, it failed with a error of failure to create listening socket for port 53 address already in use. All right. So the question is, what is using it? So let's find out. There's two different ways. Well, there's more than two, but the two ways I'm going to look at here is LSOF, right? To look at all the open files, pipe that to grep dash I of listen. That is going to show us all the listening ports. And here we see uh, port 53 is being used by system D dash resolve. All right, let's take a look at another way of finding out what is using that port. We can use netstat dash four NLTP. And uh, uh, unfortunately, this container doesn't have the net tool. So I'm going to go ahead and install with apt install net dash tools. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do netstat dash four NLTP. And once again, uh, it comes back and shows us that port 53 is being used by system D dash resolve. So let's go ahead and stop that process so that we can actually use that port. So the way to do that is doing system control, stop system D dash resolved. And when it comes back, it gives us no feedback. So let's go ahead and get our own by doing system CTL status and then system D dash resolved. And what we see is that the process is inactive, which is good. That's what we did by stopping it, but it's still enabled, which means it will restart upon reboot of this machine, which we don't want because we want to run the DNS mass service to handle DNS and use port 53 instead of system D resolve. And so to make sure it does not restart on reboot, we can go ahead and disable that service by doing system CTL disable system D dash resolved. And again, we get no feedback. So let's go ahead and do system control status system D dash resolved. And here we can see that it is now disabled. All right, a couple of things that I want to do before I go back and restart the DNS mass service. As we discussed in a different video, the file slash Etsy slash resolve dot conf is transferred by the DHCP server to the client when an IP is issued, right? So if we look at the Etsy dash resolved on this machine here, if we do a more, we see that the name server is set to 8.8.8.8. .8 uh, but we want to change this to refer to a local DNS on this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the resolve.conf file. Actually, technically, I don't want to really delete it. I want to just change the name of it in case I change my mind. So I'm going to do move slash Etsy slash resolve.conf to slash Etsy slash resolve.conf.back BKP. All right, so now we've gotten rid of the resolve.conf file. Let's take a look at the next step. Because we want to run our own name server using DNS mask, let's go ahead and edit the config file for DNS mask at Etsy slash DNS mask dot conf. I'm going to go ahead and vi slash Etsy slash DNS mask dot conf. And there's a couple of things that we want to go ahead and change. Right now, this template has everything commented out. So we want to uncomment some things. So the first thing we want to do is uncomment this thing down here. It says domain dash needed. Yeah, we don't want to forward any plain names that doesn't have a domain, right? So we need a domain before it gets forwarded. So that's a good thing. And we also want to uncomment this line that says bogus dash priv because we don't want to forward any addresses in the non routable space. Third thing we want to do is this line down here that says no dash resolve. You actually want to uncomment that as well because we don't want the system to read the resolve.conf file. We want the system to get the name server from this file. And down here, I'm going to actually specify server equals 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. All 
right? So because there is no resolve, it's going to come and look at this as the outside external DNS server. All right, we're going to come down a little more, and we are going to uh, have this line that says local equals slash blue monkey forensics dot local slash because this is going to be our local domain on the internal network here. And then looking down a little more, we want to add the host names, right, that are not complete. So we want to uncomment expand hosts. And then attached to that is the name that we actually want to expand it to. So domain equals blue monkey forensics dot local. Uh, since we are already editing this file, let's also update the DHCP configuration. So far, we've only been doing DNS related configurations. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to set up how DHCP is going to assign the IP numbers. So I'm going to give it a range from 192.168.1.200. It's going to go to 192.168.1.250. And then the net mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. And then lastly, uh, the lease time is 12 hours. Next, we're also going to add an option. So DHCP dash option equals option colon router comma 192.168.1.1. So this is going to tell the system the router is at 1.1. We're going to add another option. DHCP dash option equals option colon DNS dash server comma 192.168.1.207 right so dot 207 is going to be our dns server mm -hmm. and lastly we want to uncomment the line that is dhcp authoritative right so we want to make sure the network knows that this is the dhcp service to listen to okay we can go ahead and write and quit this file and just as a summary, if we want to take a look at the lines that we just uncommented or added, what we can do is do grep dash V dash E double quote, carrot pound double quote, dash E double quote, carrot dollar sign double quote, slash Etsy slash DNS mask dot conf. So what this does is dash V is basically reverse, right? So everything that doesn't doesn't match the pattern will be will be displayed and the patterns that we want to match is caret dollar sign the caret is the beginning of line and dollar is the end of line so if you just have caret dollar that means it's a blank line and we want to also filter out the caret pound which is basically having pound as a first character of a line which is basically all the commented out lines so now we can see these are all of the lines that we just uh, added or uncommented out all right, the next thing we need to do is update the Etsy host file with the names of the machines on the local network and their associated IPs. All right, so this is a centralized uh, location for all of the mappings. So I'm gonna go ahead and vi slash Etsy slash hosts. So the local host is already there, I'm gonna leave that be. What I'm gonna do is add 192.168.1.19, that's our Proxmox server. I'm going to add 192.168.1.177 and I'm going to call it airdrop space snapdrop. So you can put multiple names and they both will resolve to one IP. And lastly, I'm going to put 192.168.1.77 and then that's our open VPN service. And keep in mind, you don't want to edit any text in between these um, PVE sections because they're going to get overwritten. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start the DNS mask service by doing system control start DNS mask. And then to make sure that it also starts upon a reboot, we can do system control enable DNS mask. All right, so everything should be running. Let's go ahead and test it from a machine that is on the network. Now, if we do a ping from our client machine, I'm gonna do ping snapdrop, this would fail because the machine has not received the updates from the DNS server. We have one more step to go. 
We are almost done with setting up our local DNS, but before I continue, please click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. And while you're at it, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. It is not for the YouTube algorithm, which I'm not sure if it's even a thing. It just gives me an ego boost. Now we can continue to make changes to our router. My network is currently configured such that the DNS mask machine is running DHCP and DNS. Plus our router is also running DHCP. So what I need to do is to tell the router to stop running DHCP. Keep in mind that this next step will be different for everyone as your network may be set up differently and your router is most likely going to be different than mine. On my Fios router, I'm going to go ahead and click on the advanced tab. And then under network settings, go into network connections. And then from there, look for the network for home slash office. And then once in there, I'm going to do settings. And then look for this thing that says IP address distribution. Currently, it is set for DHCP server. Right? So here are the settings for what my router is doing as a DHCP server. But I'm going to go ahead and switch this to disable as I have DNS mask doing all that. And then once I'm ready with that, I'm going to hit save changes. And that's all we need to do with the router to turn off DHCP service. Now I'm going to go ahead and reboot my client machine. And then once it comes back up, I'm going to type resolve CTL status. And what I'm looking for here is that the DNS is going to be updated to point to our DNS mass server of 192.168.1.207. And if we ping Snapdrop, we can now see that the machine responds. And we can also see that a fully qualified domain name is attached, right? So it's actually snapdrop.bluemonkeyforensics.local. All right, so in summary, in order to create a local DNS server so that you can just type in the name of the local server instead of the IP number, we need to create a new LXC and then download the DNS mass server software. Then we need to set up the DNS mass server to perform DHCP and DNS. Then we are going to update the router to turn off DHCP. And then we can reboot any existing clients so that they can see DNS in action. And any new machines that join the network should not have to do anything. The DHCP should take care of all of the DNS issues. For more networking videos, watch these videos here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.